Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to get the score you deserve on test day and absolutely dominate the NPTE. So today we have a practice question. We'll be going through the system interactions section on the exam. There are only a handful of questions in this section, but before we get to that, just a quick reminder that we are starting up our VIP program. Those of you looking for a very, very robust study plan, the VIP program is the way to go for you. So we go through each of the systems in the VIP program, go through cardio, musculo, neuro. I mean, really, we go through the whole list all the way through the gastrointestinal, genitourinary, lymphatic system interactions, non-systems. We have a hybrid model, synchronous and asynchronous content to make sure that you've got the content you need to get the score you deserve. So as far as how our course works, the VIP course works, is that we have a a full and very robust library of content that you review each week as a part of each system. And then we get together for practice questions. We answer questions you have. Plus you have access to me one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to schedule a call. We can talk about content. We can talk about test strategy. It really is a one-stop shop to make sure you've got everything you need to pass the NPT. So whether you are on your first attempt or your sixth attempt, we can definitely help you as you get through, to get through help you get through the exam get through to the other side and actually be cash positive. It's so much fun to get to the other side and not just be paying for all of your experience. And that's that was my experience and I think everyone has this. In the last year of PT school, you spend all your time working, but you're not just working for free, you are paying for the experience. Get through that, get to the other side and actually get cash positive. It really is a fabulous and very rewarding career. And so just keep an eye Keep in mind the light at the end of the tunnel here. That once you get through to the other side, it really is, it's a sweet, sweet profession. And yeah, as always, if no one has said thank you to you today, let me say thank you. Thank you for your efforts in going through this test. I know it's difficult. I know there's a lot to it, but thank you for doing it. All right, so let's talk about our practice question today. We're talking through the system interactions section on the exam. There are somewhere between eight and 12 questions related to this. Now, system interactions is a very blanket catch-all term, meaning that you can have some systems that interact with others, as, as implied by the name, system interactions. So we will go through an example here, talk about the answer together, and uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. While examining a child with muscular torticollis, which of the following cranial nerves is most likely to be implicated as the cause of the torticollis? While examining a child with muscular torticollis, which of the following cranial nerves is most likely to be implicated as the cause of the torticollis? And the answer options are cranial nerve 3, 5, 7, or 9. So we've got cranial nerve 3, 5, 7, or 9. So this question asking about whether or what cranial nerve is being implicated as the cause or most likely to be implicated as the cause of the muscular torticollis. So as you're looking at this, you're, if you're like me, I would immediately think about, okay, well, we know that cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve, is involved with the sternocleidomastoid muscle. The sternocleidomastoid, that's the muscle that's clearly tight in the case of muscular torticollis. However, we see from our answer options that cranial nerve 3, 5, 7, and 9, that obviously 11 is not a part here. And so then you have to say, okay, which one is it? Is it cranial nerve 3, oculomotor, cranial nerve 5, trigeminal, cranial nerve 7, facial, or cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal. So as we consider this, uh, the correct answer here is cranial nerve number 3, oculomotor. Why is that? Well, one of the primary causes of muscular torticollis in children is if they have double vision or a visual skew due to the loss of a cranial nerve. So this would be implicated for both for all cranial nerve 2, 3, 4, and 6. All of the visual cranial nerves if there was something wrong with any of them and you developed double vision or a skew deviation, that would result in the double vision, which would then cause the child to turn their head in order to accommodate or compensate for the skew. And so therefore, as a general rule, if you see someone with torticollis, one of the things on the list to check would be to check their vision and make sure that their eyes are lined up well, they don't have double vision, they don't need corrective, corrective eyewear at all. You just want to make sure that the eyes are in good shape because that can cause or be a secondary cause of the muscular torticollis. Now, granted, there are lots of cases of idiopathic torticollis. You've got cases of congenital muscular torticollis, uh, spastic torticollis. I mean, there's, there's several different flavors of torticollis, but one of the things to check for would be vision. 
And so these other cranial nerves, cranial nerve five, that's the trigeminal nerve related to the muscles of mastication and the sensory of the face, not particularly related to torticollis. Cranial nerve seven, the muscles of facial expression, again, not directly related to torticollis. And then finally, cranial nerve number nine, this is related to swallowing, it's part of the gag reflex, and again, is not as clearly related to torticollis as would be the, the visual nerves, cranial nerve two, three, four, and six. All right, so there you go. There's your practice question for today. Hope you enjoyed that. As always, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, where you can find out all of our little, all of our updates, our cheat sheets, everything that we've got for you. Be sure to check that out, that out and that's frequently where we will post any of our bonus content, any of our material that we're giving away. Always want to be on that list, ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. And as always, if you have any questions or if you have a group of five or more and you want a sweet discount, just go over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact and you'll be able to reach out to us for a pretty sweet discount if you get if you get your cohort together or a group of five or more. All right, with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Hope you have a fabulous day. Happy studying. Uh, if you're listening to this while you're driving or running, be safe in all that you do. And I will catch you all in the next episode. Thanks. Will Crane fist bumps all around.